She was 19 years old when she first came to play in the U.S. Women's Open Golf Championship. Now, 23 years later, Kathy Whitworth is still seeking her first victory in this most important of women's golf tournaments. This was her approach shot to the 18th hole yesterday. Never had she led the Open for so much as a single round until this week. Now, suddenly, in one weekend, she has the opportunity to win the Open, become the first female million-dollar winner, and tie Mickey Wright's record of 82 tournament wins. But as the final round began, she led this woman, Bonnie Lauer, by only a single stroke. This was her approach shot on 18 yesterday. In six years on tour, Bonnie has won only once. The caliber of play this week has been dramatically impressive, and the two shots by Whitworth and Lauer before the largest third-round crowd ever at a women's Open underscored the overall quality of play. Both of these putts were made for birdies, and the scene was set for today. Center stage, Kathy Whitworth. The Open has been such a jinx to her that she appeared to give up on it a few years ago. Now, if not a last hurrah, certainly a tribute long delayed may be waiting for her when this day is done. If Kathy Whitworth is going to achieve that ambition, she'll have to come from behind to do it because we now have new co-leaders. Beth Daniel at age 24, twice a U.S. amateur champion, and Pat Bradley, one of the leading money winners on the LPGA Tour. They are tied for the lead two strokes ahead of Kathy Whitworth, but it's far from over. There is a long way to go. As you see, there are Daniel and Bradley, two strokes ahead of Whitworth and now five ahead of Cynthia Hill. Bonnie Lauer has faded fast, has lost five strokes to par. Joanne Connor and Marlene Floyd, and here's some of the other leaders in whom you might be interested. Donna Capone, a two-time champion. Debbie Massey, who almost won this championship two years ago. Hollis Stacy, another two-time U.S. Women's Open champion. And Sally Little, the talented South Africa. I'm Jim McKay, reporting live from our commentary position behind the 18th Tower. Once again, we would repeat, this is the Open Championship. It is the national championship of women's golf open to amateurs and professionals. The tournament, by the way, is the poorer in this final round for the absence of Nancy Lopez Melton. She had been playing with a painful shoulder injury all week long, gave it the ultimate try, but this morning had to withdraw. We'll tell you more about that as we go along. Right now, let's bring in our expert on the sport of golf, current captain of the United States Ryder Cup team, Dave Marr. Jim, the, I think the pressure here is as great as it is in any major tournament. Uh, this is the biggest tournament they have a chance to win. Kathy Whitworth could, could do so much by winning this tournament that I feel that she probably had by far the longest night of her life, maybe. Now, Pat Bradley, second leading money winner this year. Beth Daniel, they had everything. They had the same amount of pressure, probably, but they can charge a little bit, which they've done. Kathy's made some bogeys, they've made some birdies, so that's why they got out of here. We've seen it so many times in men's and women's open that final nine of the last day, which is coming up right now, they begin to tend to go backwards. And I think you've told me before, I, when I say why, you say in three words, U.S. Open. That's exactly what happens whether you're talking about the men or the women. The good thing about those two, Beth Daniel and uh, Pat Bradley, they're playing together, so they can kind of keep an eye on each other, but they've got to be sure that Kathy doesn't sneak up behind them. Okay, why don't we have a look at the weather? It's a little bit different than yesterday. We had heavy rains overnight. Right now the temperature is 69 degrees. Chance of rain, 70%, and we're told right now that at some parts of the golf course there is a light rain falling although up here at 18 there is no rain at all so far let's bring in now our new expert of the weekend joan perkle most knowledgeable about women's golf and of course the only one of us who could go into the locker room this morning what was the scene there how did the girls seem to be feeling well jim there's much excitement in the air today there's several girls who could win it's a very tight championship i spoke with kathy this morning i noticed a little bit of tension apprehension even in her voice today which would be expected uh, being in the lead but uh, when i talked to uh, pat and beth they seemed to be a little more relaxed and kind of had the attitude of coming from behind and giving it all they had because there's nothing to lose of course winning this championship would be equally important for all three 
So it's going to be a very exciting day. Okay, it is already an exciting day here in LaGrange, Illinois. Let's have a look at the pairings, the final pair pairing that we'll be seeing. Joe Ann Carner paired with Marlene Floyd, an interesting contrast in personalities. Cynthia Hill, who at 69 yesterday, is with Debbie Massey. But now, the ones we'll be watching most closely, Beth Daniel and Pat Bradley paired together and now tied for the lead. And then Kathy Whitworth trying to come from behind. And Bonnie Lauer, who, as we said, is fading fast right now. This is Beth Daniel on the 10th green with a potential birdie. Nope, not this one. Well, there is your first look at her live as we go along. You saw her picture on the on the freeze frame. But this is as it is happening here at the LaGrange Country Club. Young lady out of South Carolina. <laughs> Beth Daniel, as we said, twice U.S. Amateur Champion. Two years ago, she was Rookie of the Year on the LPGA Tour. Last year, she was Player of the Year. And what a nice progression it would be to become the Women's Open Champion. She has all the tools to do that. She is a very, very impressive player. As we look at the back nine, you can see the 10th hole, 11, 12, running away from the clubhouse. Uh, great mixture of holes. This is really a very fine golf course and in great condition. 10, a par 5, 479 yards long. Kathy Whitworth, we're told by Bob Rosberg, who's out on the course, has just birdied nine. She's only one shot out of the lead. This back nine should really be something. You might notice Pat Bradley here, a little bit reminiscent of Aoki with the putter blade, uh, the toe off the ground, the heel in it. She started putting that way after last year's Open. Okay, we'll get another look at that as a closer look, I'm sure, as we go along. Other basic commentary will be coming your way, as always, from Peter Allis and his colleague, Frank Hannigan of the USGA. Peter? Well, Frank, this is the third Open Championship you and I have seen this year. This uh, week, it's the ladies' turn. And one thing that strikes me is the tremendous improvement in their competitive edge over the last two or three years. Oh, absolutely. They're playing much better than they did five years ago. Why do you think that is? I think it's the, uh, the, the nature of competition. More interest, uh, more attention just breeds quality. And do you think the comparisons between the ladies' tour and the men's tour is uh, completely without foundation? I think one is one and one is other. Yeah, absolutely. There's no reason to, uh, to make a comparison. Would you say the golf course here is uh, a little easier, the rough not quite so severe as previous championships? No, I think the rough is about what it's been in recent championships. I think the greens are a little bit more receptive. Now, there's been a little bit of comment about the color of the greens. They seem to be like an uncle I had once, a bit seedy looking. Uh. <laughs> well, what happened was that in order to get the greens fast, and you do want fast greens for a national championship, it was necessary to cut them very low while they were wet. This resulted in some scalping. What we're seeing is some brown patches that are actually the stems of individual grass plants that have lost for the time being their green leaf growth. But brown isn't necessarily bad, nor is green necessarily good, as long as the putting surface is smooth. As a matter of fact, we tend to over fertilize and over water in this country, and so you get sometimes a rather mushy condition and a color that's more appropriate for cemeteries than it is for golf. <laughs> well, there's your answer. Let's go out and see some golf. Okay, gentlemen, a look at the leaderboard right now. Only one stroke separating three women, Daniel Bradley and Whitworth. Well, we're going to get some information of a commercial nature, then a message from the United States Golf Association, and then we'll be back. Did, in fact, have a problem. You have to try to get up and down in two strokes from there to stay tied for the lead with Pat Bradley, one stroke ahead of Whitworth. <laughs> three different stories out there, three different women. Now Pat Bradley. Told she also has a five iron out there on the 11th fairway. This 391 yard par four. She's been much straighter today, Jim, than, uh, than Beth Daniel. Beth has had some problems controlling the ball. Bradley has been just absolutely superb. Okay, well, long with that one to the back of the green, but on the putting surface. Here's Sandra Haney putting for birdie on 18. In 1974, she sank a 75-foot putt on 17, a 15-foot putt on 18 to win this championship. Let's see how she finishes up this time. Haney started the day five over. She's even par for today, so she's still five over for the championship. If she made this, she would have a round of 71 and finish up at four over par. Very respectable tournament for her. Nice to see her playing again, Jim. For a long time, she didn't play many tournaments at all, and this year she's made sort of a little comeback and gotten back out here. The green's a bit slower than they were yesterday. Remember, we not only had rain overnight, it was torrential rain. 
but the golf courses drain very well. Look at this. Look at this. Looks Ooh, like a replay of 74, Dave. Well, that was a little shorter. Than, I mean, a little longer than the one she made at 18, but about a mile shorter than the one she made at 17. So a fine round of 71. We're glad we were able to document that one for you. A little bit earlier today, I talked to Nancy Lopez Melton. As we told you at the top, she had to withdraw. I asked her exactly why. Here's what Nancy had to say. Nancy, can you tell us exactly why you withdrew this morning? Well, um, I'm having a problem with my right shoulder, and I withdrew because um, the pain after yesterday got a little bit worse, and I felt like if I needed to uh, rest my arm now was the time to do it uh, because the doctor that I spoke to yesterday said it would take about three to four weeks for it to get better. So I felt that, you know, because I really didn't have a chance to catch up today, that it was better if I withdrew from the tournament. Can you tell us exactly what the problem is? Well, um, I saw two doctors here, and they said it's my rotator cuff uh, in my right shoulder, and um, that it can just come up any time, and that's what happened. I played Monday, I practice round, and Tuesday I played, and uh, on the back side, it just, I got this terrible pain in my shoulder, and uh, felt the, re the, uh, the next day I felt the soreness from the pain that I had the day before, and um, it just was very disappointing for me. I think we should reiterate, too, that this is definitely not one of those withdrawals you may have hear, heard of from time to time, where maybe somebody sees they're out of it and they just want to make the first plane. She was hurting so badly that she was observed to be crying near the end of a round, both on Friday and yesterday. She gave it a big try. Now, back to Beth Daniel, trying to get it up and down, to remain at six under par for the championship and two under on today's round. Pat Bradley is three under on today's round, by the way. Concern sound from the crowd as you can see she has left herself a long way from the hole That's part of the problem Jim after a rain is to adapt as to how quick you're used to one speed pitching into these greens or chipping to them and With the overnight rain now you've got to change your whole idea about how far you can pitch the ball If by any chance there should be a playoff it will be 18 holes tomorrow and we will be here for it No sudden death in the US women's open same situation as in the men's open and in the British open. Ten amateurs, by the way, played all 72 holes, an unusually high number, and the low amateur was Mary Baker. They've all finished. Mary finished 11 over par. She wins a gold pin. The silver pin for second low amateur goes to Patty Rizzo, and the bronze pin to Rose Jones. So congratulations to them and to all of the amateurs who played all 72 holes here as you were looking at the leaderboard. Pat Bradley. Said she's a New Englander, former ski instructor, as is Debbie Massey. Born in Westford, Massachusetts. Seven year professional. She's had seven, eight wins out there. Has not won the Women's Open, however. None of the three leaders here have won the Open. She leaves that for the par here on the 11th hole. Yet to come up are a couple of par threes over water, dog leg left, dog leg right, straightaway five. As you said, uh, Dave, there's a great diversity of holes on this back nine. Great mixture. And you may not be able to reach 18 today in two, uh, as they could yesterday. The wind will be against them here, plus the fact that it's a lot wetter today. Okay. So that's, the, that's the group of Beth Daniel pairing with Beth Daniel and Pat Bradley. Just behind them playing, remember, is Kathy Whitworth, who started the day with a one-stroke lead, and then bogeyed both the third and fourth holes. That's what happened to her, but she's been fighting back, and most recently had a birdie on nine. Let's watch Beth Daniel with this longish putt for a par. There, on the left, we have Whitworth for a possible birdie. What a swing we could have here with these two. Oh, what a par putt by Beth Daniel to remain at six under. Can Whitworth tire? Nope. Not this time, at any rate. She'll have that putt for a par to remain one shot off the lead. That was an enormously important putt for mm -hmm. Beth Daniel. We may have mentioned yesterday, Joan, that Beth's attitude seems a little easier this year than it did last year. Yes, it definitely does. And today, that was one of the points I was making earlier. She is, seems so more, much more relaxed and so much more poised and uh, just has a great attitude these days. 
Now Pat Bradley for her par on the 11th hole. We'll be following the rest of the back nine. There's a very, very fine mist is falling on most parts of the golf course. Nothing to bother them at all yet. Pat Bradley remains tied for the lead with Beth Daniel. We're at the U.S. Women's Open Golf Championship. Where it looks like one of the most exciting finishes they've ever had may be shaping up. We'll be back. Kathy Whitworth on the 11th tee. I'm Peter Ellis with Frank Hannigan of the USGA. And we're getting really into the final stages of this 29th United States Women's Open Championship. It may be developing into a three-horse race, but what three thoroughbreds they are indeed. Just one stroke separating Daniel Bradley and Whitworth. Bonnie Lau, well, she's making a little bit of a comeback. She started the day five under, now one under. She was back to even. So a great strain on this young lady, battling away. Well, let's uh, watch this swing of hers. And that's OK. Well, Bob Rosberg has been with this uh, two ball right from the outset. And let's have a report from Bob on their progress thus far. Peter, the uh, both girls got off to a very shaky start. Whitworth bogeyed a couple of the first four holes and Bonnie Lauer was uh, five over after seven, made a great par at eight and then birdied nine. And she seems to be playing a little better now. And Whitworth has settled down quite a bit. She's, she's not driving the ball very far, though, not near, nearly as far as she did yesterday or the day before. So I think the wetness of the golf course, the cool breeze has definitely uh, hurt Kathy. There's uh, Bob Rosberg, who is going to follow that match right to the end. Now here's Pat Bradley playing with Beth Daniel. And earlier this morning, uh, Joan Perkle spoke to Miss Bradley and had some interesting things to say. You're a great sports fan, and when you're home at Marco Island, what do you do for relaxation? Well, uh, I love to play racquetball at Marco. I love to just walk the beach and uh, watch the sunsets and just kind of um, be by myself. Um, when we're out here traveling on tour week after week, we're really in the hustle and bustle of crowds and uh, a lot of people, and we're in the entertainment business. So when I'm at Marco, I just like to kind of be by myself, relax, collect my own thoughts, and, and uh, just kind of mellow. Oh, uh, that was Pat Bradley. And that's how they stand. Daniel and Bradley at six under. Kathy was... Whitworth at five under. Uh, as I say, they're four ahead of the, the field. And it would appear to be a three-horse way. Uh, Bradley I watched with great interest in the Peter Jackson uh, Golf Classic in Montreal a couple of weeks ago up there with a great French crew and Bob Moyer and all. And she played very well indeed. I'm uh, most impressed with her. But another name on that leaderboard Marlene Floyd nice to see Marlene who's been on the tour a year or two now playing nicely indeed and Frank you must have seen some great changes in this championship since it was last here in what 74 uh, yeah just uh, seven years ago dramatic changes Peter for example there were only 155 people who entered uh, the, throughout the country seven years ago now we're up to 434 I have to have qualifying throughout the country the prize money is up from $22,000 to $150,000, an indication of the, of the interest that's been uh, promoted and, and, and earned by these young women. Beth Daniels, second shot at this very interesting 12th hole, which is a little scalloped out green. You can see the flag is very much on the front of the green, front right corner. Slip back to Kathy Whitworth, the 11th. 391 yards. You can see she's having to hit a wooden club. And what a good one if it chases up. Bradley, second to the 12th. Just a little short pitch. Oh, and that's bold and may go over the back and has, and that leaves her a tricky little chip back from where the spectators have been gathering throughout the day at the back of the green with the overnight rain. Pat Bradley may have found herself a rather mushy lie down in there. Now back to Bonnie Lauer. Second shot to the 11th. Also you can see with a wooden club. 
the course has uh, dried out amazingly well after after the last night's rain. We were uh, we're staying about 15 minutes away, and uh, all our car parks and everything were completely flooded. The course has stood the test very well indeed. All credit to all concerned in that department. good shot remember although the hole is 391 yards it takes two woods to reach the green and how often do you see men professionals hit the ball as close as that to the flag with wooden clubs not all that often so the comparisons should not be made they're very good shots indeed and uh, I for one delight in watching the ladies and uh, uh, again will say that most club golfers could learn more from watching these girls play than the mighty men that's how they stand in the US Open we're back live at the 12th green of the U.S. Women's Open, LaGrange, Illinois. Daniel and Bradley tie for the lead. One stroke back, Kathy Whitworth, and that, then the rest of the field seemingly out of it at this point, but those are the ones who are on the leaderboard. So, Beth Daniel and Pat Bradley playing together, battling it out, but they must always be conscious of this woman, Kathy Whitworth, on the 11th green here on this par 4 hole. Remember, she bogeyed the third hole and the fourth hole, but then came back with a birdie at nine to get back into contention. She dropped two strokes behind. Beautiful putt, and yet she seemed to know all the while that it was a little bit short. When you see a person start walking, generally they've missed it. Right. All right, a par four on 11. Kathy Whitworth remain at five under for the championship, one over on today's round. Boy, the pressure and the pressure of an entire career really on her shoulders today. Kathy, who unquestionably today will become the first female million dollar winner in a career. No question of that. She only needed $1,031 to do that if she'd finished in 38th place. Some great achievement, even if she doesn't do the rest of it, Joan. Yes, you know, an indication of that pressure, she said she stayed very much to herself this week. She had not won a tournament in three years until she won earlier this spring out in Ridgewood, New Jersey the Ridgewood Country Club in a sudden death playoff on the second hole. Now Bonnie Lauer at one under par for the day. However, she is four, uh, one under for the championship. She's four over for today. Pat Bradley for a par on the right and no sure thing there either. All right. Rock solid, Pat Bradley, as Bill Fleming indicated, all day she's been straighter than Beth and uh, solider. She's very pleased with that new putting style, too. Hmm. Bonnie Lauer on the left there. Uh, yeah, we'll get, a, as we said, a good look at the putting style. And apparently, uh, she did pick up from Mr. Aoki of Japan. Yes. If it keeps working. <laughs> sure works for him. <laughs> Beth Daniel on the right for a par on the 12th hole. All right, she remains at six under. Bonnie Lauer for a par to remain at one under. Bonnie has only won once in six years on tour, although she's played much better than that. Good and consistent player, but just that trouble winning one bad round usually, and that, of course, is what's happening to her today. Yeah, just such a her uh, terrible start today. I know she's going to look back at that later and say, gosh, just... How can you go five over so quick? Mm -hmm. Nightmare deal. <laughs> okay. Tough par putt for Bonnie Lauer to remain at one under for this U.S. Women's Open Championship. Moving along through the back nine, and I noticed, Dave, that the wind is picking up here at 18, and that could be significant. It's going to be dead against them when they come up on this par five. Well, I feel that's why they had trouble with 12 on their second shot. It's such a short shot there to pitch over that bunker, but you must get over the bunker downwind. That's right. 18 is a short par 5, but normally they might hope to get home in 2. It'll be more difficult today. Now the 13th hole. This is par 4, 359 yards long. Pat Bradley. Trouble on the left and the fairway bunker on the right is uh, has been in play the first three days. Bill? Uh, she kept it good and low, and I think maybe, uh, Dave, you made a very good observation, even though that ball rolls into the rough about a uh, foot. Uh, that wind is now crosswind. 
And you can see what would happen if the ball should be up high and get caught. You can okay. see a lot of trees over there, Bill, that's right. and that's where you don't want to be. Huh. I'll bet, Daniel. That's on the there right side, yeah. and it goes into the bunker on the fairway. And uh, again, Beth Daniel uh, is a little bit errant off the tee. Beth Daniel having errant tee shot trouble. Who is she, by the way? Well, we thought you'd like to know, so let's meet her right now, up close in person. Beth Daniel's credentials would be impressive for an entire career. Twice U.S. Amateur Champion, LPGA Rookie of the Year, Player of the Year, Leading Money Winner. But Beth is just 24 years old. The Seabrook Island Golf Club in South Carolina is where she goes to think things over, like her early days on the tour. The first six months that I was out on the golf tour, it was more of a, a learning process for me, learning how to travel, how to handle myself, um, learning not to worry on the golf course how I was going to get this flight or catch a flight to get to the next place. And I settled down towards the end of, the, of my rookie year and learned to take all of that off of my mind and just concentrate on golf. For me, it was just a process of learning to feel comfortable in my environment before I would start playing well. The thing I'm most proud of is that last year, I played so consistently well. And uh, to be named player of the year is something that no one can ever take away from me. And it, it's, it'll be important to me and it'll, I'll treasure it as long as I'm in golf. I really enjoy my free time. And a lot of times I'll take a week off and I'll just kind of disappear and no one really knows where I am. And uh, that's just because I feel I need the time away to clear my mind. When I take off from the tour, I just kind of relax, go out in the sun, maybe walk the beach. I do a little horseback riding. I find that really relaxes me. I can go ride in the woods or out on the, the beach or something like that. And it's, it's very relaxing for me and I really enjoy it. I know when I'm out on the golf tour, there's not, there's not much time for social life at all because you get up in the morning, you go to the golf course, you, you practice before you play, you play your round, you practice afterwards, and by the time you get back to the hotel, all you want to do is take a shower, go eat dinner, and then go to bed and do the same thing over again. Being a professional golfer is something that I've strived for since I was a teenager. And I think even then I realized that I was going to have to give up a lot of things to play golf. A little insight into the personality of Beth Daniel. Still tied for the lead with Pat Bradley, Whitworth, one behind. Now Bradley with her second shot. Just into the rough uh, there, Jim, and uh, not the best lie in the world. 13th hole, 359 yards, and just off the edge, as you see. Narrowly averting the bunker, in fact. Beth Daniel's the one that's got the tough shot. She is in the bunker, right? She's in the bunker, and the, and the, and the reason it's tough is because there's a little bit of, a, of an overhang with very high grass, not more than two and a half feet in front of her, and she's got about 130 yards to carry. So uh, our experts, Dave and Joan, could perhaps speculate what's going through her mind. <laughs> trying to make a par, be sure you pick the right club there. Right now, by the way, we're looking at Bonnie Lauer, just so you're not confused. That is not Beth Daniel. Bonnie Lauer playing with Kathy Whitworth. But now, here is Beth Daniel. Yeah, she has to get that up quickly, looks like, Dave, for sure. And it, you, you must try to get, you must get out of the bunker. Of course, she's going to try. That. Don't take any chances on a shot like this. Just take your your lick if you can and uh, get a club that can over the lip of the bunker and if you hit it solid enough maybe you can get it to the green. The word is that it's a seven iron. That'll get it up quick enough? Well, it should. With the rain last night the sand ought to be a little firmer mm -hmm. and that's what you hope for. Get a little firmer there. Just be sure you make a nice smooth swing. And okay, she got it out. Sounded good. Oh, boy, did she send it on its way. I'll tell you she got it out, Jim. <laughs> shot by Beth Daniel. She's been in trouble many times in this round, but each time she's come back steadied 
and held her position as a co-leader at the U.S. Women's Open. Let's take a break and come back. We're back at the Ladies' Open with uh, an enthusiastic crowd watching some very interesting and exciting golf indeed. Weather conditions overhead, well, they're just about holding right. Not too bad. Now, just moments ago, Pat Bradley had a little bit of good fortune. Her second shot just skipped along the edge of the bunker, and she was faced with this shot. Uh, talking over with Dave Marr, I said, these are the shots that sometimes you can just nip into the hole, hands forward, lofted club, leaving the flag, give it a little chop. Now, has she left it short? No, she hasn't. And how about that for a lovely little three? Could have been perhaps a five. A low drive into the rough, not her best. A second shot that just skipped along the edge of the bunker, chipped it in, and when you put it on the scorecard, it's three and a birdie. Now, how about this? Now, back at the 12th, this was also recorded, Kathy Whitworth trying to win her first championship. It's very difficult pin placement at the 12th. Over the bunker in this little hollow, and dig in, and how about that? Just like two boxers, toe for toe, slugging it out, blow for blow. Great stuff. Now we're back live with Beth Daniel. She's seen Pat Bradley, who she's playing with today. Hole out from off the green. She played a splendid shot, that wonderful bunker shot. And she has this putt for a birdie three. Looking good. <laughs> this is probably some of the best stuff I've seen in my life. I'm not as old as Methuselah, but I've been around a few fairways in my time, and this is great. Bonnie Lau for a three at the 12th is for a birdie. And she's got that as well. <laughs> They're making a mockery of the game, Doctor. Great stuff indeed. Bradley and Daniel now seven under. Kathy Whitworth battling away behind after a, a poorish start. Played a wonderful second shot here to the 12th. Now if she can hold this putt, only a few feet, she will remain within one stroke of Beth Daniel and Pat Bradley. She must have heard the cheers, she knows something's gone on. You don't mind the oohs and the ahs, it's the cheers that disturb you. So Whitworth for a birdie three to go six under and just one behind the joint leaders. Beautifully struck. This is really something. And on they go. Now the 14th. How about that for a lovely looking par three. Over the water. Tilted green towards the players. Pat Bradley's tee shot. Let's hear from Bill Fleming. Turn it. She said turn it. And it's hole high on the right side. I'll tell you, Peter, uh, her accuracy today has really been phenomenal. I think it's really one of the most exciting wind-ups to a women's open we've seen in a long time you remember last year amy alcott had lapped the field a couple of times well back to the t this elevated t beth daniel the t is just a little bit higher than the green you can see how it drops down and across the water bunkers left and right not a, not the widest of greens but after last night's rain I think uh, a properly struck ball won't run too far. Now Beth Daniel, this tall, slim, elegant young woman, joint leader with Pat Bradley. Doesn't waste much time, Frank. No, she's she's away with it quickly. Look at this again. Powdering them right at the flag. Back to the 18th. Here's the defending champion we were talking about moments ago who won in such great style last year. 18th green. She can't finish with anything, I don't think, better than a par. So Amy will be round about seven over par. Par here for four rounds, 288. So Amy round about 295. What a, a sweet lass she is, too. 75 today. Chris, you can help me now, throw at our programs, we're going to have messages from the USJ, who control, along with the RNA, the destiny of so many golfers. Here it is. 
14th green, Beth Daniel and Pat Bradley. Both seven under par, but being chased by the overnight leader, Cathy Whitworth, who got away to a bit of a shaky start. But my word, she's showing her character now. Some of the uh, other players, Sally Little, best round today so far for Sally. Round of 70, 292 for over par. Sandra Haney, 71 today, she's also 292. Uh, Patsy Sheehan, a 70, the 290 also. And golf really is getting so international these days. We had the, uh, the British Open last week, which was watched throughout the world. And we are now being joined live by millions, literally millions of viewers in Japan. Probably the greatest golf crazy nation in the world today after maybe America and Sweden. And now Bradley, first of all, though, at the 14th. Long putt, having just chipped in at the last. She wasn't far away from the hole, and we've seen plenty of great players chip in from that distance, but what a moment to do it on the last hole. She just lines up her putt, and we'll go back quickly to the 18th and see Hollis Stacy, who's won this championship twice. She's coming up the 18th. It's her third shot. One over today, four over for the championship. And what a, a popular lady she is. So back to the 14th, though, and Pat Bradley. Longish putt for a birdie, too. No. That was not on the agenda at all. Oh, that did not look like Mr. Aoki. No, Mr. Aoki would not have been pleased with that. I, I don't know what uh, happened there, but it was a slight miscue, and she's left herself an awkward one. And now Beth Daniel has, well, it must be 17, 18 footer for a two, and she's looked very good indeed to me. This for a two, this, uh, in fact, to take the outright lead now with holes running out, it uh, could well be decided with just that odd stroke here. And of course, the uh, $10,000 difference between first and second, $22,000 to the winner, 12,500 to the second, 9,500 to the third. Just imagine that, going out on a Sunday afternoon and playing for that sort of dough. Daniel is in, oh, rushed the top of the hole and didn't turn. Ah, that was a great effort, beautiful putt. But she's got her par safely. Remains seven under after 14 holes. Now Bradley with, well, it's all of five feet, isn't it? Now, this is probably uh, one of the most crucial shots she's had over the last few holes because she knows she's made a mistake in, the, in her first putt. And it's very hard to let those thoughts go out of your mind. Concentrate now. And we welcome our Japanese viewers, live now in Japan, Pat Bradley for a par at the 14th. And she gets it very well indeed to remain the joint leader in the 29th US Ladies Open Championship, Beth Daniel and Pat Bradley, seven under par, with just a few holes to play. All great stuff indeed. Whitworth, though, not out of it yet by a long way. After a, a little bit of a weak start, she's battled back beautifully, she seems to have got her, her nerves under control, just one behind. And unless we get very dramatic happenings, it's a three-horse race now. 18th green, Hollis Stacy, twice winner of this championship, with a putt for a birdie four. And of course, three times the national girls junior champion, too. Three years in succession, an extraordinary achievement. That probably, uh, some of us think it'll, it'll be the, maybe the one record in, in, in USGA history that'll endure. Yeah, she's an extraordinary player, Hollis. It, when, when she's really on song and going, she, it, it's almost ridiculously yeah, easy. I mean, she won the championship two years in a row, and then 
She blows a bit hot and cold. And there's the lowest 72 hole score history in women's golf, 271. Here she goes for a birdie and oh, not a good effort though. So that'll be a par and she will finish with, well, a good championship at four over par. There's the model of the 15th, a good par four dog leg, as you can see, right to left. Two well-placed bunkers. Left. This is an important drive for her, uh, as you know, uh, Peter, simply because she was in the rough on that uh, 13th, and she just does catch about a foot of the first cut. And it's sitting up fine, so it's really almost like fairway. Holly Stacy made her little putt for a par at the 18th, so for you Stacy fans, she finishes at four over par for the championship 292. Now, Beth Daniel, driving at the 15th. Three pars so far. Yeah, all right. That's, That's a beauty. Shot. Lovely shot, Bill. She seems to be very composed. Well, bo Whitworth at the 14. 13, I beg your pardon. The 13th being Kathy Whitworth. You can almost see the strain on her face. Uh, years, she's calling up all her reserves of experience. But it's interesting that both she and, and so many of the other competitors, she has no, not won the championship. That's how she's finished over the last few years. She's one of the greatest names in women's golf ever. And as she goes away, you wonder what little thoughts tick through her head. I can do, I need this, I need that. This is her best open for a long time. That MC on the left means that she, she missed the cut and did not complete the four rounds. Now, Bonnie La, who faces the same problems as Cathy. She's obviously desperate to win. She was a joint leader overnight. So she had her own private thoughts on how she was hoping to play the day. And as Bob Rosberg told us, uh, got off to a, a very shaky start, but has got her composure back together again now. And there's two under par, fourth place. How would you like that sort of putt to cost you winning a championship? Looks right in, just spins out, but secretly, you know, you're quite pleased to get down in two and not to have raced it four feet past. Well, that's a par. Remains two under. Just have a look at this again. Does look so good. Looks to be too wide here, doesn't it? Then turns, turn. Now it can't miss. Oh does. Caramba. A little testy putt for Cathy. This for her pa. Oh, she got it well. The old trusty putter is serving her very well. She's pleased to get her par. Has a little deep breath. And off to the 14th. Bradley now from just off the fairway at the 15th. About 130 yards, Peter. Clear shot right at the pin. Jump off, jump off there. Oh, here. Well, trying to urge it up the green. Uh, she's all right, quite a way away though from the hole. Now, Beth Daniel has only about 140 yards or so to go, not too far.
off to the right side. And it splashes in the sand on the right side. Well, that was a poor shot indeed from shortish range. Kathy Whitworth, 14th. Tee shot on its way, and she's pushed it out the right, and the nerve ends are getting a little raw, and much can still happen in this year's Ladies' Open Championship, and that's how they stand. We resume our live coverage of the U.S. Women's Open in LaGrange, Illinois, under gray skies on a coolish summer afternoon. Temperature 69 degrees. There has been a little rain at the moment. It has stopped again. It doesn't seem to be a serious threat. Back at our 18th tower position, as you look at the leaderboard, Jim McKay with Dave Marr and Joan Perkle here. And uh, the battle has been ebbing and flowing here until a couple of minutes ago. It was mostly flowing and beautifully as the leaders knocked off one birdie after another. Now it has begun to ebb a bit because all three of them ha have some sort of trouble. Pat Bradley is on the green in two, but a long, long way from the hole. The other two are both in bunkers. Joan Perkle talked to her a little bit earlier. You have a very interesting putting style that's very effective for you. When did you acquire this? I started this uh, putting style a year and a half ago. Uh, I was working down at Marco Island where I live, and uh, the pro there, Mike Mullis, noticed that with an upright putter, uh, I always wanted my hands to sit a little bit lower. So we went into the pro shop, and he got a putter for me and stepped on the head of the putter and bent the shaft back to flatten it. And um, that's where the style has come from. And the key of the whole thing is, is with my left hand a little bit lower in my putting stance, the left hand won't break down on me. It stays very firm and solid <laughs> towards the target of the hole, and uh, it's been very successful for me. Yes, you might say it's been successful, Pat. That, in the end, just might be the putt that won the Women's Open, but there's a long way to go. I say that, however, because the other two leaders are both in bunkers, major problems, that's got to be a little bit of a shock to Beth Daniel, who you see in your picture there, Jim, where she is actually inside of Pat Bradley, and you get to make about a 50-footer. Now she's got to get down in two just to stay within a shot of the leader. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to the putting green and try that dead putting <laughs> style for myself, so I'll see you later. You know, Pat Bradley's five under for the day. She could shoot 67 with pars in. That's a nice oh, touch. Yes. Look at that. Beautiful. Especially after Bradley makes the putt ahead of her. Now on videotape, Kathy Whitworth, the 14th hole. Remember, that's the par three. She was supposed to be close to the hole with her tee shot, but no, she was in the bunker and left herself that for a par. She's left herself those real tough par putts, and the tension of those begins to accumulate, doesn't it? Well, if you leave yourself enough of them, you're going to miss one somewhere or the other. It's still a very good shot, though. Donna Capone on the 17th green. This is a par three. It looks very much like the 14th, both of them with water to be traversed. Donna Capone, twice the winner of this championship. In fact, she won it twice in a row a little over a decade ago. She's even par for today, one over for the championship. 17 is a little different, though, Jim, in that the lake will come into play a little more. I say they look very much they look the same on camera, yeah. Fates always seem to be against you when those things happen, but it, it's all the laws of physics, speed, and where it hits, what the gravitational break is on it. She's had such a great year this year. I'm sure this week is a little bit disappointing for her. Now back to Beth Daniel, who now needs just this one for a par. Here are some players who have finished. The defending champion, Amy Alcott, you saw, finished that seven over. Jan Stevenson, 12 over. Another former champion, Sandra Palmer there, 12 over. Jerry Britz, who won this championship. Laura Ball Cole, Judy Rankin, one of the great players of all time in women's golf. Sandra Spuzic, a former champion. Susie Burning, who's won this more than once. All of their scores for today. Now Beth Daniel for the par. To keep her now one shot out of the lead. And she does it. up and down. That was vitally important for her. So it's Bradley by one over Daniel, by at least two over Whitworth. Whitworth still facing a far putt on the 14th. <laughs> on they move. Crowds have been excellent this week for the first three days. They had record crowds. Uh, no, no official attendance in so far today. 
fact, here it comes now, 10,800. Bonnie Lauer for a par. Two under for the championship, but she's three over for the day. Okay, well done. Again, so after his, Dave indicated a disastrous start, she had a double bogey and a couple of bogeys. She has steadied really very well. You feel it's too late, though. It's the thing, just when you finish, I mean, Bonnie's had a great tournament. If she'll just keep her mind on that, maybe she's out of her slump now. And don't let the start get her, because she'll be in position to win a number of more times, I'm sure. Perhaps you're wondering how long, of course, the women are playing this weekend. Well, the front nine is 3,138 yards, the back shorter at 3,066, total yardage 6,204 yards, par 72. They finish up, by the way, with a birdieable par five. That's, it's going to come right down to that, it looks like right now. With just two shots separating three women. This woman, Kathy Whitworth, however, needing this to stay within two shots of the lead. Puts another one down. Mm. Will not right. crack. Very good up and down there when you need it. I have to tell you that. Yes, Joan. Yes, Kathy has the ability, uh, Jim, to play all kinds of shots. That's why she's had such a fantastic career. No question of it. One of the great women golfers of all time. Goes over the million-dollar mark today. The first woman ever to do that. And should she win this championship, it'll be her first women's open. She'll tie Mickey Wright for most tournament wins at 82. Now we have Cynthia Hill on the 16th, putting for a birdie. She's even far for the day. Had a 69 yesterday to put herself into contention. Rounds of 76, 70, and 69, as we said, even far today. Great amateur record. Did turn pro till she was 30 years old, which uh, maybe she should have turned a little sooner because she's a real good player. That better hurry, though. Very smart, too, Dave. She's Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Miami, University of Miami. Not too many of those around. I better not get around her. <laughs> Okay, a good look at uh, Cindy Hill. You see some sweaters on them today. As we said, it's considerably cooler, 69 degrees, but with the breeze, it feels a little cooler than that. On the 15th tee, Kathy Whitworth. Well, you see that one, quite obviously. Perfect. A fine tee shot for Kathy Whitworth as the battle goes on in the U.S. Women's Open. We're back at the Ladies' Open, and there's the model of the 16th hole, and that strategically placed bunker down the fairway, guards the tee shots, and there's Beth Daniels second in, and she doesn't oh, like it. Oh, it's way left, uh, Peter. Way left. In fact, it's left of the bunkers. Yes. What happened of, there? A little bit of nerves coming in there, Bill, I think. Bill down uh, on the fairway, and she's missed that by a margin. How's uh, Pat Bradley lying there? Bill looks oh, good. <laughs> what golf we've been treated to today. Birdied the first hole of the day, then birdied five, birdied six, birdied 13, birdied 15. Get it, there. Get up. It's on the green. Yeah, that's a good shot. Well, she's in the lead. Beth Daniel, her nearest challenger, is in trouble. Back to Kathy Whitworth. At the 15th, long second shot with a wooden club, and what a good shot! Stopped very quickly. These greens very wet, but that really is good straight hitting. It's nice to see. Back to the 18th on a Capone. Third shot. Third shot for Donna on this 455-yard par five. Slowly back and right through. And boldly at the flag. Oh, Donna Capone, she's graced the fairways, 
very elegantly. Had some interesting things to say earlier to Jim McKay. You know I'm gonna be like him. And the cat in the cradle and the When I was growing up, I used to beat balls for hours and hours and hours on the practice team. And I got so bored at being there by myself, so I thought, well, I'll just take my radio out and start listening to the radio while I practice. So it's been something that I've done since I was, well, I started playing golf when I was six years old, and probably when I was 10 or 12 was when I started doing it. It blocks out noises from behind me. People are watching me hit balls, you know, they're always talking about your swing or something. So um, with the music out, I don't hear it when I'm hitting the shot. I hear it before I dress the ball and after I hit the ball. But I guess I have pretty good concentration. WLN, Cats in the Cradle, Silver Spoon, Harry Chapin, 335. I have that address. <laughs> in my day, it used to be swing to the Blue Danube. Now it's a little bit more modern. Donna Capote coming up to the 18th green. Champion, as you see, 1969 and 1970. And a very nice lady indeed. Back to the 16th and the trials and tribulations of Beth Daniel, who really did fire one away left. And there's water in a stream. Now, Frank, what could this, uh, is that casual water? It looks to have a line uh, around it. Yeah, there's uh, some ground under repair in that area, but I, I don't think her ball is in it. No, she's not in there. She's in the very, very high grass, right behind that tree. Uh, you can see her caddy standing near the ball. I had to actually go up within oh, a foot and a half just to see the top of the ball. But the reason there's a delay here, there are golfers on the 17th tee, and she can't even look over the shot until they've teed off. Is the tree in her line, Bill? No, no, she's got a straight line to the, to the flag and uh, no problem with the bunker. I think the, the problem here is just simply trying to dig it out of that uh, well, like uh, what I would call it is just a uh, heavily matted high rough. So, Bill, really, uh, to get down in two from here would be a minor miracle, would you suggest? I would think so. And you well, can see, you can see <laughs> sees how she's taking clods of it out of there. Well, that really is nestling down, and you really don't have much control. She gave it a nice little oh, stab a out. Shot. Played it well. Just to get on. Yeah, good shot. And she's got a long putt to hold to save her par. And so, well, this is the fascination of the game of golf. You never know really what's going to happen because, and neither do we, because Beth Daniel might hold this putt, Frank, and uh, Pat Bradley might hold hers, might two putt, might three putt, might, you know, there are so many permutations, and that's the fascination, isn't it? It's extraordinary that some of the holding we've seen in the last 20 minutes has is, is been almost incredible. We were advised by Martha Martin of the USA Women's Committee, who was walking with this pairing, that uh, they paced Bradley's putt off at 28 paces. That yeah. one, uh, well, it's, it's super to see them doing so, so well, and that's great. Incidentally, someone else is doing well is... is uh, uh, Billy Edwards, he's okay and well, so thank you all for calling in. Now, Kathy Whitworth, the 15th, a long putt for A3, and it looks good. Oh. What a lovely effort. Just slipped by, though, that awkward distance, four and a half feet past. Pat Bradley on the left. Well, she told us how she worked it out, the coach on her putting stroke. Look well away from it, almost as if she's hitting a four iron shot. Can she do it again? Get in, get in. Oh, very tidy. Very neat and tidy. So, now will she mark or putt or get out of the way or have a rest and a few deep breaths? and a ponder. Deep breath and a ponder. And she'll watch Beth Daniel try to get her four. Donna Capone got her par five at the 18th, so she finishes the championship at two over par. That's 290 strokes for four rounds. And she'll be in the first half a dozen. 
Now, Beth Daniel, after that uh, rather wild second shot, has this putt to remain just one behind Pat Bradley. Good strike. Seventeenth now, and Cindy Hill for a birdie. Cindy Hill for a birdie at the seventeenth. <laughs> really have been firing everything right at the flag, right at the hole. Lots of drama and good stuff we've seen today. She's one under par. She stays that way. She could well finish fourth or fifth. Back to Beth Daniel. This for a one over par five. So that's safely done. And now Pat Bradley just has her putt. Before that, it's Whitworth. She gets hers again. She's sticking right there. Cindy Hill made her par at the 17th. Whitworth made hers at the 15th. This is Bradley at the 16th, taking a lot of care on this putt that can't be much more than all 28 or 30 inches, if that. But these all count as much as a full-blooded drive. Good four. Now in the lead by two, and just two holes to play. And shooting a 67, par par for a 67. Par par for a 67, and I do believe with two good hits, so uh, she can get very close to the 18th, Frank. I would think so. This is where you have to control your emotions and, uh, you know, take your time. This is an interesting hole, and I'm sure uh, Pat Bradley's got some some thoughts on it, because as you stand here, it looks easy, but tensions come into play, and Pat has thoughts on it. 17 is a good par three with the water in front. It, uh, you have to uh, pick the, pretty much the exact club there. You don't want to get too cute on that green, because um, the water, you know, the water will take the shot, and uh, you'll get very wet, or else if you hit too far past the pin, it'll kick and run into the back bunker. So you have to take that ball in pretty high and let it try to fall in softly onto the green. Well, let's see if she can do it just one more time. She gets it right. It'll take an, uh, an awful lot of pressure off her young shoulders. A little bit of a wind against her here. I think that's what's causing maybe a little more thought than she would take, uh, Peter. Uh, in the previous day, she's used a five iron here. I... She seems to have played with a lot of skill and great composure, Bill. Well, just one of the great superb rounds in, in, uh, in golf, just like David Graham's final round at the U.S. Men's Open. of a champion and a, and a great champion at that. The way she pushed that one in, beautiful shot. Now Beth and Daniel, two behind Bradley and tied with Kathy Whitworth. Second place. Needs a 1-3 finish, we feel. Is possible. Oh, and what a good shot. This really has been a scintillating stuff. Shooting balls right at the flag. Here's a shot from inside the clubhouse. Hundreds of interested spectators and members looking out on this great occasion. There's one of the great all time names of, the, of women's golf, Joanne Carner. Once Joanne Gunderson won five U.S. Amateurs, she's won a couple of U.S. Opens, finished today 
with a 74, two over for the championship. She's been such a fine player for a long time, Jim, and affectionately called Big Mama out here by the, by the little rabbits, if you call them rabbits on the ladies' <laughs> tour, Joe. They all love her on this tour, don't they, Joe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, there it is, two strokes for Pat Bradley with less than two holes to play now over Beth Daniel and Kathy Whitworth. And this has not been a question of leaders holding around her as often as the case in U.S. Open, male and female. Remember that the woman with whom she's playing, Beth Daniel, is two under for the day. Here's a look at the swing that has served her so well today. She plays so many of these iron shots almost like a punch. A nice uh, balance there. Good straight left arm. Head still. Move right on back through the ball. Watch her left heel come down there, Jim. That's really good. Good position there. Weight on the left heel. Spins out a little, but looks as though she's punching the shot or holding it in there. And if she can make this putt, she's going to have some breathing room. This could do it. No. We'll start to come back a little bit. That will be a par three to keep her at five under for the day. I was saying that Beth Daniels is two under for the day. Kathy Whitworth is even par for the day. There has been this woman, Pat Bradley, going out and winning it for herself. If in fact she does win it, five under par at the moment. One more, and she would have a new Women's Open 72-hole record. Yes, I think her, her patience and her good management and uh, consistency she's shown during the week is paying off. Okay, let's have a look at uh, Beth Daniels' swing as she surveys her possible birdie. But she really needs this to have any realistic chance of catching Pat Bradley. Okay, Dave. This is Beth's swing here. At, uh, she's made a couple of wild swings, one to the right and one to the left. Now, this time she makes a good swing, good position, nice tall girl, upright swing, gets her... Hands under the club at the top. Good position there, on balance. Good move down through. Right, Jim, that's just like you want to draw it there. And of course, you saw the result of the shot. Good high finish over on your left side. No slices or pulls or anything in that swing. The man we saw standing behind her, by the way, was one of the best amateurs of all time, Bill Campbell. Looked like he was leaning on his umbrella in a very fashionable way, and a proper golf way. Now we have Beth Daniel. This for the two more important to get her within a shot. Better hit it. Oh, she hit it man. all right. It's not over. Uh, pressure pretty weak. Beth Daniel on 17. And I must say, Dave, that we have not seen this kind of pressure putting that I can recall in the closing holes of either a men or a women's U.S. Open. It just shows you how much the golf has improved. Frank was talking about earlier that in 74 there were 155 or so entries and now there's 430. The college programs for the women now and so forth, you play in 72 holes, stroke play tournaments, they're ready, just, just like they are on a men's tour. They've had a lot of experience by the time they get out here. Cindy Hill getting ready to finish up here on the 18th, the par 5, 455 yards long. Her third shot, as you see, she's one under for the tournament even for today. She had gotten to three under at one point today, then faded back a little bit, almost got into contention. Slow, smooth stroke. Right at it. Right at the hole. <laughs> you can see how they're holding today after the heavy overnight rains. Now Kathy Whitworth, a long birdie attempt at 16. Look at the concentration, how badly she wants this. It may well be her last big chance to win the Open. It's her first big chance to win it. She's never even been close in 23 years, although she's won everything else in the game. But she, again, has left herself a little bit of a tester for the bar. Yeah, she's right on the corner. The girls have all talked about this week, this being an extremely exhausting event because the concentration just wears you down. And of course, there aren't too many tournaments they play dur during the year where they play four complete rounds. More often, they play 54 yes. holes. Oh, yes. And then the added tension of the Open, of course. Kathy Whitworth of Texas. Uh, manages a smile. Not quite out of it yet. Two strokes behind. There's the long 18th. Well, not too long, really. It would be a par four for the men professionals, par five for the women at 455 yards long. The wind is dying down a little bit now, so maybe Pat Bradley might have a chance to get home in two. Where did Daniel go, by the way, Bill? Oh, right in the dead center of the fairway, Jim. Okay, we can't see it from here. And uh, got about even with the bunker. Uh, yeah, just Dave. about even, about halfway uh, of the bunker, uh, Dave. Uh, it's good speculation here to see if she could get home, possibly, in two. How about that? Look at that. 
headed for the left side. But, yeah, but it stays fine. in the fairway. But a good, uh, oh, gee, 25 yards short of Beth Daniel. Okay, well, here we are at uh, 18. Joan Perkle here in between. Uh, what is that? A rose between thorns or something? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> kind of nonsense. Uh, this has been, as we say, just a remarkable women's championship. Kind of cool and comfortable up here on 18 at the moment. And if there's any other observation you'd care to make, you may do so. Let's take a look right now, however, at a special expanded edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next Saturday, the AFC, NFC, Hall of Fame game. That's right, professional football starting. Well, baseball may have finished. We don't know. Atlanta against Cleveland. It'll be live at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 12.30 Pacific time. Well, I hope Tally doesn't find out football starting next week. <laughs> that's, that's Tally Marr wife of Dave. Now the 18th green and Debbie Massey. Remember in Connecticut, she almost won this championship until she put her tee shot on 18 in the one divot hole on that fairway. Debbie started the day at one under for the championship. She's now four over. In other words, five over for the day, not having one of her better rounds. She started out with 71 that had two even par rounds of 72. But today, if she put par in, she'd have a 77. kind of rounds you want to forget about. You go out with an aggressive attitude in mind, you're going to play well, and all of a sudden a 77 old Red Grange jumps up and gets you. <laughs> She's normally a very strong player under pressure, too, and a great athlete. Long putt across the 18th green. It's real slow going that way, too, Jim. Mm -hmm. As you said. <laughs> well, when you get a, the opportunity to sit and watch all day, you, you know most people tend to leave it short. Now back to Kathy Whitworth's par putt on 16. Yet another one she puts down. She hasn't cracked under the strain. It's been a case, as we said, of Pat Bradley just turning in a sensational round, one of the best ever shot in a U.S. Women's Open. Pat has already hit her tee shot on 18, remember, and it was a good one with that kind of low drawing shot that's her specialty, isn't it, Joan? Oh, yes. Here she is. Very proficient at that. Second shot on the 455-yard hole. It's coming right, Jim. Come on, come on, look. Jim. Yeah. Yet another one she puts down. She hasn't cracked under the strain. It's been a case, as we said, of Pat Bradley just turning in a sensational round. One of the best ever shot in a U.S. Women's Open. Pat has already hit her tee shot on 18, remember, and it was a good one with that kind of low-drawing shot that's her specialty, isn't it, Joan? Oh, yes. Here she is. Very proficient at that. Second shot on the 455-yard hole. It's coming right, Jim. Yes, it's in the right rough, but again in the short first cut, so uh, it's sitting up there just fine. Par not, should be good enough to do it. Yes, Bill? Not, not to sad to be Close. on, though, Jim, and uh, if uh, the young lady playing with her, Beth Daniel, has an opportunity to reach this green, she is by no means safe with a par. What possessed you a while ago when she had that little chip shot, Pat Bradley, to say she might put that in the hole, and then she did? I just had a feeling it is the kind of little shot that you'll uh, more often than not make. You're pitching down the hill, and if you just pitch it about a foot, it's going to run the rest of the way just like a putt. Well, she must think she's going to get there because Beth is going to wait. All right. Cindy Hill up ahead on the same hole that they're playing, putting out. Looks like Daniel is waiting. So she's going to be trying to get home in two, obviously. So Pat Bradley did, didn't even try to get home in two. She was back further than Daniel, or else she wouldn't have hit her shot with any chance of hitting into this group. Cynthia Hill, 72 today, one under for the championship and a tie for fourth place at the moment with Bonnie Lauer, who has not completed a round. Now to 17. If you want to know about the varying fortunes of this game of golf, on this hole today, Julie Stanger had a hole in one. On the other hand, Connie Chalemi, a fine young golfer, made a 10. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I hear say get going. Four on. Oh, dear. Well, Henry Longhurst said it, but it always comes to mind, doesn't it? Her ball has found a watery grave. Mm -hmm. Well, you hate to see it in that way. I mean, the lady has just been out there all week long in front, and then to put it in the water at 17 is just a crusher because that takes you right out of the game. 23 years of trying behind that failure on 17. Now Beth Daniel with her 
last gasp. Try to get it home in two, and it could be okay. that's left. Two back. Could find the bunker. Let's see. Way oh. left, way left. Well, it rolled up again. on on the uh, on the little path over there, Jim, and then rolled off the path in yep. the deep rough. Yep. Well, not not too deep though. She has a, a pretty good chance with a lot of green there. Oh yeah. Not quite over. So stay with us. We're going to be back live again at Lagrange, Illinois. The gallery gathers to try to get a look at Pat Bradley, perhaps winning her first U.S. Women's Open. But this shot is tight. As far as the flag stick is concerned, the right rough. Just hit it At far the flag, oh, but it's long. Good shot. Long. Well, good no, shot. Great long. shot. Oh, what a shot. It's long. <laughs> Boy, come up into that wind and drop down just what perfectly. Shot. Pat oh. is going to win the U.S. Women's Open. I think we can say that now. Well, uh, you, you can Daniel pretty well goes. safely say that she's going to win now. If, if Bradley, I mean, if Daniel pitches in, that's one thing. Yeah. But if she were to sh make this birdie putt here, it would be 279 and a new record for the Women's Open, which would also be a little bonus. That's right. The National Golf Magazine member has been offering for a couple of years a $25,000 extra prize. First prize here is $22,000. She's get. 47,000 altogether, but the title is the thing, just as in the men's open. What a way to finish. She has exuded confidence all week, too, Jim. Joe, she's had such a good year. Uh, two, four seconds and only won one tournament, second leading money winner. She has been a very consistent player and uh, been a little unlucky that she hadn't won more tournaments this year. Yes, and she prides herself on her consistency. Take a look at this wedge. I assume it's a wedge she played in here. Her reaction as it came up, came up here looked like it was coming right at us on the tower from my yeah. viewpoint, but it turned out to be just perfect. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Through the uprights, it's good. That's right. It'll be more than three points for her. Now we're going to go to the Beth Daniel problem. Now, Frank Hannigan uh, did have something interfering with her stance there, but I think it was a rubber mat, and they have removed that. You might explain that situation. Well, things that are artificial and are left on the golf course are classified as obstructions, and you get relief from them. There are two kinds, uh, those that are movable, and, and what you do is very simple. You move them, and that's the end of it. If it was an immovable thing, like a cart path or a stand, then she'd get a different kind of relief. We'd have to pick up and drop her ball. Actually, she's not far from the cart path, but it is not a problem for her and is not interfering with her stance, so uh, she'll be playing it from there. She has to try to put it in the hole. That's simple and that difficult. Well, you have to be sure and try to make four. Just put the, no matter how short a putt that Pat has, I mean, the, uh, Beth has to make a four to make her make her putt. Difference between them, remember, is only one stroke after Beth Daniels' birdie on 17. Kathy Whitworth has now played herself out of it by going in the water on 17. Beth Daniel will have plenty more chances to go for this championship. Kathy Whitworth had her big opportunity today. Good shot. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Good shot. Look at that. She'd be trying to put it in the hole and was that oh. ever close. A lot of things can yeah, happen yeah. Before right. here in the clubhouse, James, my boy. Now, now, Beth Daniel most certainly will make her birdie, it appears. It's a matter of inches. Then. Pat Bradley must make her break. Or else we Great go to tomorrow. Well, how many times in playing golf has this happened to you where you, you just started leaning on your club, whistling, and somebody just pitches it right up close to the hole and the two-footer went to about eight feet on you? You say, what happens? Yes, I thought I was going to win this easy. Okay. Oh, Great score, too, 280. <laughs> For Beth Daniel, a four under par. 68 today, 280 for the championship, 8 under, which ties the previous women's open record. To be unlucky not to win, and that is really playing golf. 280, I don't care how long or short or whatever you want to call a golf course. Just uh, all of you try to go out and shoot 70 each round for four days. Now, Pat Bradley must make this birdie putt. I would say it's two and a half to three feet. What do you say? What do you uh, say? I'd say about two feet, Jim. Okay. Very similar to Turnberry, remember, where... Tom Watson seemed to have that British Open finally wrapped up in his head-to-head -head duel with Jack Nicklaus, but then Nicklaus wrapped a snake-like putt in, and suddenly it was a putt just like this that Watson had to make, which he did. Now Pat Bradley. Yep, 
She's done it. Oh, now. Right. Pat Bradley at 8.30 <laughs> has won the U.S. Women's <laughs> Open for the first time. Quite possibly not for the last. Going to nine under par, she'll win that special prize of $25,000 along with the principal thing here, the trophy and the U.S. Open Championship. A round today of six under par, 66, which is a course competitive record for LaGrange. She did everything she had to do. Yes, she did. What Man. a great finish. Great There's play. Bill Campbell mm. congratulating her. And it's going to be a big night in Nashua, New Hampshire, and down in Florida, <laughs> where she also spends some of her off time. But first, the uh, mathematical process of checking that scorecard very carefully. It's her responsibility. It's 32 back on the back nine for her. That's what I get out of that score. And she did the same yesterday, I believe. That's uh, much like the back nine here a little bit. 64 in two days is really shooting low. Right. Kathy Whitworth, by the way, put her second tee shot on the green on 17. She lies four there, however. And now she has made the putt for a five. However, that was a two over par five on that hole, which puts her at four under for the championship and two over on the day's round. So Pat Bradley is the winner of the U.S. Women's Open. This is when you want to take your time, Jim. You must sign your scorecard. Uh, of course, uh, Beth keeps Pat's scorecard and vice versa when you're playing in twos. And you go over your score and check it hole by hole. You can actually, you can sign for a higher score, but you can't sign for a lower score. So Seems like the logical way to do it. Uh, in fact, many years ago, not checking that scorecard correctly cost Jackie Pung this very championship, remember? Sure did. That would be crushing. Back at 18T, Bonnie Lauer. Lauer and Whitworth now playing out the 18th hole. Lauer in a tie for fourth place with Cindy Hill. The birdie here could take exclusive possession of fourth. Beautiful a difference of about $1,200 to it. Fine shot, wasn't it? Uh, this is going to be a tough hole for Kat Kathy Whitworth to play. The disappointment has to be very, very deep. She's been compared many times to Sam Snead's record in the U.S. Open, but it's a little bit different. Sam many times was close. Twice seemed to have it in his pocket and let it get away. But in 23 years, almost unbelievably, Kathy Whitworth has never been close, never led it even one round until this week, then either tied or led by herself for three rounds, hung in there today until the next to last hole. You think of her record, Jim, you know, eight times leading money winner, seven times uh, player of the year, and uh, just so many things. And not to have won the tournament, there's the woman who's won the tournament is carefully, if you notice, going over that score. The one distinction that uh, Kathy Whitworth does earn today, and it's a big one, is today she becomes the first woman ever to win more than a million dollars in her career. The interesting thing there is that she's the first to do it. We know that, obviously, Others are going to achieve that because of the tremendous prize money that's available on the women's tour now. But she achieved it over 23 years. When she started, prize money in these tournaments would look almost laughable to you if you could see it today. You almost didn't get enough to mark your ball. You, you wanted heads or tails, Jim. <laughs> You're watching scores, of course, of people who have completed, as everybody has, except the two who are still out there on the golf course. Dale Lundquist and Vicki Fergon at 10 over par. Kathy Baker. Amateur. And as we said, 10 amateurs did finish and play all 72 holes, a remarkably high number in the U.S. Women's Open. Must be looking for Kathy's ball there at <laughs> 17. Ah, uh, yes. Patty Rizzo, another amateur, finished. Jerry Good Britz, player. former champion. Yep. Marilyn Smith, that's the Marilyn Smith, the more recent one. David? Yes. Uh, Frank, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Pat Bradley uh, used the. Uh, I don't want to give away a secret, but I think she used a set of clubs that was once owned by your colleague, Robert Rosberg. In the tournament? In this tournament. Must must have a little air time on him. Is Rossi? Did, is that true? There. Well, that is true, David. Uh, she's been using them for about four years, and I think it was an amazing thing that she did. She went from a set of R shafts to a set of my clubs that uh, had X shafts in them, and she did it in about two days at the Dinah Shore about four years ago, and she's had them ever since. She's used them a lot better than I ever did. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, no, not true, Ross, but that, that's remarkable. She went with such a big change. 
Well, not that, too many of them play with X Shaz, but I think Pat can handle him. And I'll tell you, she's hit some great irons with him for the last four years. Now that you mentioned, I remember we were at the Dinah Shore when she started to do that. There's the second shot of Whitworth on the 18th hole. She's four under for the championship. Almost certainly has to finish in sole possession of third place. She's four shots behind second place. She's three shots ahead of fourth place. And tied for fourth is this woman, Bonnie Lauer, tied with Cindy Hill. Bonnie was only one shot out of the lead when this day began. But she got back to even par there at one time as she started five under and gotten back to uh, one under for, for the tournament. I'm, you know, that's she's got to feel fairly proud because she didn't quit and go she, for about 85. No, she, she's just four over for the day. Yeah, she's had a good tournament here, and all her her parents are here, and all her friends from Michigan have been here rooting her on all week, and she's done very well. It's so quiet here right now. This was the moment when Kathy Whitworth would have hoped the gallery would be gathering around, the tension would be growing, and perhaps the moment would finally be at hand to win that first U.S. Women's Open. However, I would think that uh, perhaps renewed ambition might stir in her after winning her first tournament in three years, uh, not long ago, and now making this great performance in the Open. At age 41. I'm sure she's a very dejected lady right now, though. Yeah, she's still got a little smile on her face there. But, <laughs> so if Rossi can hear me, I'm really interested as to why she would go from an R shaft to uh, an X shaft that you had. That's quite a jump uh, between clubs. Well, David, I think the reason was that uh, she Talk asked me... Talking about Pat Bradley. Right? Yeah, she asked me to look at her swing, and she was hitting some awful looping hooks. And actually, it was her first couple of years on the tour, and... Uh, I just didn't think the shafts were right for her, and I asked her to hit a few shots with mine, thinking that she might like to go to an S shaft. And she hit these so well that uh, she asked me if she could use them in the tournament, and I said yes, and that was the last I ever saw them. But, uh, well, Bob, we might also explain the difference between an R shaft and an X shaft well, for those who are not that knowledgeable. Well, R is a medium shaft, and that's what you generally try to sell to people, and S is a stiffer shaft in degree of flexibility. And when you get to an X, that, there's not much flexibility there in the shaft, and you have to be pretty strong to use it. Is X the stiffest shaft of all? Dave, is X the stiffest shaft of all? Uh, yes, it is. It's regular, unless you want to cut off the bottom and insert more of it into the hosel, then you can get a super X, which Godzilla can't bend. <laughs> okay, now, Kathy Whitworth about to move up to the 18th thing. <laughs> Green and here are those amateurs that we talked about. Kathy Baker, the low amateur. Congratulations to her. Wins the gold pin, 11 over. And here are the other amateurs who finished this year's Women's Open. Made the cut. So that gives you an idea of some of the young amateurs who are coming along. Some of them will stay amateurs. Some will turn professional, and they'll be in contention here in future years. Kathy's third shot. Yeah. Well, drawing back on her a little bit right at the hole, concentrating right to the last stroke. Still looks like a third place finish, though. Yep. Not what the day may have had promised. No other way. Has to be a third place finish, I believe. Bonnie Lauer. There's the whole gathering, gathering okay. looking on. We said 10,800 today. They did not break the four-day record, although they broke the record for the first three days, and I'm sure that the oh, heavy overnight rains and the serious threat of rain today held it down. Meteorologist was saying 70% chance of rain today, so I guess everybody, a few people, decide to stay home. Well, if it doesn't rain today, it's missed a good opportunity. That's right. Third shot, Johnny Lau pulled hit it. Hit behind that. Hit behind it. Well, well on the pull. left side of the From time to time today, you've been hearing messages from United States Golf Associates. Now one about that associate program. There's the trophy. I love golf, and this bag tag is a symbol of my commitment to the game. It's the mark of every USGA associate. The United States Golf Association has set the standards that have kept the game great since 1894. Among other things, the USGA conducts national championships and makes sure that our equipment conforms with the rules of golf. When I'm with the USGA associates, I'm in good company. We're all people who love and support the game. Even in a crowd, when I see another golfer with an associate's bag tag, 
I know that there's a special bond between us. If you love golf, become an associate for just $20 a year by calling this toll-free number. In appreciation of your support, you'll receive the rules of golf, a full year of golf journal, and your associate's bag tag. Won't you call now and join us? You'll be in good company. That's the way it finished. Pat Bradley winning by one over Beth Daniel. Interesting, too, the game of, the game of golf is a game of such courtesy that as the final two players are putting out, there's still total silence here. There's courtesy among the spectators as well as among the competitors on the golf course. Bonnie Lauer surveying her longish putt. Kathy Whitworth looking on further down the green there. Another thing Bradley's win does, Jim, it puts her into the number one position on the money winning list for the year. Pat Bradley had rounds of 71, 74, 68 yesterday, and 66 today to set a new record for the Women's Open. We're going to have some words with Pat Bradley. In fact, uh, Bill Fleming is standing by with her down there right now. But again, the courtesy of the game of golf is let's watch these people finish their game. Then we'll go down there. good effort there. Good roll, because that's that putt has uh, fooled most of the players today. Not slower than they thought. The par five then for Bonnie Lauer will give her a round of 76, four over par, to add to earlier rounds of 72, 67, and 72. You know, Jim, everything was so close a few holes ago, and it's kind of shocking to see things change so rapidly. Well, that's right, but of course, still the margin was only one. Beth Daniel, by the way, birdied this final hole four times out of four. Mm. Now, Kathy Whitworth has yet to putt to finish up. <laughs> Size of the caddy and the, and the player. <laughs> yes, lead in the helper. <laughs> that watching. She's a nice lady. Fine personality. Very nice. Speaking of nice ladies. Birdie putt. Good way to finish up. Yeah, left. Nope. So, a par on 18 for Kathy Whitworth. We'll bring her in at two over for the day. Round of 74, four under for the championship. She finishes third. Round of 72. 69 Jimmy ran another great tournament here. They had a great finish in 74, and you just couldn't ask for a better finish this time. Congratulations from Will Nicholson, the president of the U.S. Golf Association, for Kathy Whitworth, now officially the first woman golfer to win more than a million dollars. Now, let's go down to Bill Fleming with the winner. And what a happy lady she is, Jim. Pat Bradley shooting a great 66 today. Pat, I, I certainly couldn't fault you for having those tears in your eyes as you came into the scorer's tent. I'm telling you, Bill, this is, this is without a doubt the greatest moment in my whole life. I am so excited. I, I can't believe it. And I know my folks have been watching, and I'm going to be home tonight, and we'll celebrate again tonight. I don't think they're going to let you out of the press tent for quite a while. <laughs> she also accomplished a first, I might add, by being the first open champion to kiss one of our commentators, you gave Bob Rosberg a kiss on the cheek. Uh, yes, I did. He's a good friend of mine, and, and he's helped me out at times when I was out playing in Palm Springs in uh, the Dinah Shore and everything, and so it was just great. Every, it's just marvelous right now. Did you feel that you had a 66 in you today, Pat, when you started? Um, not really. Um, you know, the day was kind of gloomy, and the wind was blowing a little bit, and it was wet. And it was raining, it sprinkled a little bit, and I thought that with the rough being thick and long and, and the, go the golf course playing long, I was just, want, you know, hoping for just around par. But thank God it was the 66, because par wouldn't have worked. <laughs> <laughs> you chipped it in at 13, you made an absolute monstrous putt at 50. How about that, huh? That's like a no-brainer, you know, a snake. <laughs> and it went in, and it just went nuts. <laughs> that cheer, by the way, was for Kathy Whitworth who uh, it was a 
a very good sport in losing. Well, she went over the million dollar mark today, and uh, that is very exciting. One day I'll reach that point. How close have you ever come before, Pat, to winning the U.S. Open? Um, well, when I played as an amateur, I never made the cut. And uh, when I turned pro, I was making the cut, and I think my best finish was about a fifth or a sixth at Hazeltine, I mm -hmm. believe. So, I mean, this is it. This is the ultimate right here. Well, congratulations to you. You're a great champion and certainly deserved of, of the honor of being the winner of the 29th USGA oh. Open. Thank you, Bill, so much. Let's get a word with uh, Beth Daniel here. Uh, Beth made it a gallant try, one of the great shots here. Beth, uh, it wasn't to be, I guess, this year, but nobody can fault you for the effort. No, I tell you, we were neck and neck from the first hole, and it, <laughs> I feel like I've just got a head full of gray hair right now. I mean, it was... It was quite a last round. It was quite an 18 holes, and, um, you know. It was I, exciting. I don't know what it was to you two people out there, but to us, I don't think we've ever seen in a Women's Open Championship anything like it. Yeah, it was exciting golf. I mean, you know, every time Pat made a putt, it seemed like I made a putt, and then when I made a putt, she would make one right on top of me. So, I mean, it, it, it was unbelievable. It really was, and it was exciting to be out there playing. You certainly put the pressure on her here at the 18th with a brilliant shot, even though that second one got away from you. Yeah, I had to hit, I had a three wood in my hand and I knew I had to hit it really hard to get it there. I just came over the top of it a little bit. And, um, but I hit a, a great shot up there and um, had to tap in for birdie. That's right. Well, next year is always around the corner. Best of luck. All right, thanks. All right, Jim, back to you. Okay, I think we should document the fact that never before has anybody, as Beth Daniel did this year, shot rounds of 69, 74, 69, and 68, and lost the U.S. Women's Open. All she did was tie the previous record. Well, that's about the story from here, standing by at our New York studios, and of course, we will be back right now. Al Michaels. All right, Jim, a reminder that uh, tonight at 8 p.m. in ABC News special report, Social Security Myths and Realities. For the first time, an easy to understand look at the Social Security system and what can be done to save it. That's tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, a reminder coming up next Saturday. Miss Baseball? Well, football is here as the Hall of Fame game gets the NFL schedule for ABC started. Atlanta will take on Cleveland from Canton, Ohio next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. You can see the time right there, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, special three-hour edition. Those of you on the West Coast next will see our coverage today of the National Sports Festival. And then next Sunday, we will conclude our coverage of the third National Sports Festival from Syracuse, New York, with a special beginning at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific Time. All right, right now, let's return to LaGrange, Illinois, and Jim McKay. Okay, Al. Right now we're back at LaGrange. Quickly down to Bill Fleming. Okay. 30 seconds to talk with Kathy Whitworth, who's gone over the million dollar mark. Talk on it. It wasn't to be, I guess, to win the Open. No, well, I've kind of got used to it. <laughs> it's, it's been that way for uh, quite a few years, so. But I'm happy for Pat. That was a great round of golf for her. That, uh, that she really deserved it. Well, you had a great following today, Kathy, and uh, we'll continue to have. Yeah, well, they were very nice. They uh, followed me right down to the bitter end, and I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you for taking time just to celebrate a little bit with us about the million dollars. Jim? Okay, that then is the story under these cloudy skies here in LaGrange, Illinois. A freeze-frame look at the winner. At age 30, out of Nashua, New Hampshire, Pat Bradley. The title goes to a Yankee this time. And as Dave said, it looked like a field goal, but it was only a national championship. <laughs> U.S. Women's Open champion for 1981, Pat Bradley. Dave, as always, good to be with you. We'll be moving on to the PGA now. Joan Perko, very nice to have you with us for the first time on this weekend. you like it? Uh, thank you. It was great. Great working with you and Dave. Okay. Well, there they are, the two who fought it out to the bitter end, and this one was the winner. Congratulations all around for Pat Bradley. This is Jim McKay, Dave Marr, Joan Perkle, Peter Allison, Frank Hannigan, Bob Rossberg, and Bill Fleming saying so long from Illinois. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Coverage of the 29th U.S. Women's Open Championship was produced by Bob Goodrich and directed by Jim Jeanette and Terry Jastro. Our technical directors were Werner Gunther and John Allen. The associate producers, Ben Harvey and Bob Rossberg, Jr. And the associate directors, Bob Lanning and Jack Graham.